Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about which bird might be right for you. Is it gonna be a cockatiel or a conure? Because I get asked this a lot. Obviously I have cockatiels and conures. Uh, people ask me, which one should I get? And while it's really difficult to tell people which one to get, I can give you some kind of similarities and some very differences between these two species. So hopefully you can make your mind up on which one you think would fit in well with your lifestyle. So to start with, I thought we would talk about cockatiels and what makes them different from conures. Then we'll talk about conures and what makes them different from cockatiels. And then we'll talk about some general points because there are a lot of similarities uh, which are worth bearing in mind whether you get any kind of species of bird. So first of all, cockatiels, generally speaking, are a bit more flighty than conures. Um, they're a little less trusting with different scenarios, new things, that kind of stuff. So uh, generally speaking, they're a bit more flighty and a bit more nervous of change. Obviously this can all be uh, made better through training and things like that, but as a general rule, I find that cockatiels are more flighty. So if you are looking for a more confident bird, you might prefer a conure. Next up we'll go with one of the main really obvious differences which is that cockatiels are very dusty. Uh, so cockatiels are part of the cockatoo family and they are a powdery down bird. So they have a fine dust all over their feathers to keep them in really good condition. But this dust will come off when they shake, when they preen, when they're just going about their daily business, chips are shaking there and they are dusty. Um, so if you have any kind of respiratory difficulties or if you're quite sensitive to that kind of thing, they might not be the right pet for you because their dust does get everywhere. It even affects me sometimes when they're really fluffing up lots when they're preening. Uh, we do have an air purifier. It's always recommended when you have any species of parrot to have an air purifier. Um, it does help with the dust. But um, if you are someone who doesn't like a lot more dust than we get normally in our homes, then again, cockatiels might not be right for you because you can't change that. Even with regular baths, it's part of their anatomy. It's perfectly normal for them. So that's another thing to consider. And if you would like to look for a bird safe air purifier, I'll have a link down below. Uh, I've got one in my Amazon store, which is the one that we use, and it's perfectly bird safe. Now these points are very generalised, but I wanted to kind of let you know because obviously every bird's an individual, but sometimes species have kind of generic traits. And the next one is I say that cockatiels are generally kind of chill and gentle when it comes to interactions with humans. There will be some that will be scared because they're not bonded with you or they've had a negative situation. But generally speaking, I find them to be much more gentle. They don't bite as hard usually. Um, and I just think that they are a much more kind of chilled out, relaxed, less frantic bird compared to conures, which I'll talk about in a bit because I find that personalities like that are very, very different. Now another thing you need to be aware of when you have a cockatiel or you're considering having a cockatiel is that they are prone to something called night frights. Because they're a bit more spooky with different things, they can actually spook in the middle of the night and they can hurt themselves and it's very scary. Our boys have had night frights, not so much now that we have a bigger flock because they kind of expect any kind of bump or noise or shadow in the night to be one of the other birds which is great. But generally speaking, cockatiels do have night frights and you can't always predict when they're going to happen. Um, I do have a whole video on preventing night frights and uh, setting your birds up for success, so I'll leave a card for that now if you want to go and take a look, but they can be very scary for you and your bird. And you need to be able to catch them as well and make sure that they're okay because um, sometimes they can pull out feathers and they can be bleeding and it can be all very stressful. So if you watch my night fright video, that can give you a little bit more information about night frights and if you think that you can handle them because they are not fun, um, but they are something to consider if you are looking into getting a cockatiel because Pretty much every single cockatiel has had at least one night fright. Now the last point, which is definitely not a reason to get a bird, but I wanted to point it out to you is the difference, is cockatiels, especially the males, will sing. Uh, obviously you need to train them a little bit, and I do have a video on how to train your cockatiel to sing, but generally speaking, most males will pick up some kind of tunes, and a lot of people really like that in birds. As I said, it's not the reason to get a bird, that you should be one to get a bird for other um, reasons, but males generally can sing pretty well, and they can say a few words sometimes too. Fish says hello, and Alexa, and fish fish. Uh, chip can say chip chip as well. But generally they're a bit more tuneful and pleasant on the ear, although these guys do like to scream a lot. Um, cockatoos will still scream, but they are definitely more tuneful. Uh, the singing is very nice when they choose to do it, and conures don't sing, so that is a big difference between the two. So 
now let's talk about conures, specifically green cheek conures, although these kind of bits of information are kind of generic for conures as a whole, but again, every individual is an individual, uh, but as I said, these are generic kind of information tips, and the first one is that compared to cockatiels, conures are a bit more playful, they're a bit more mischievous, they like kind of getting up to mischief. These two love being in my hair, which is funny until they get caught up and start screaming. Um, they really like to play, quite often they'll kind of roll around on the floor, they'll play on their backs, they'll play with balls. Not every conure will, and you do have to build up that bond with them and that confidence, but they are much more mischievous and playful compared to cockatiels, which is great. Sometimes it's a bit naughty as well. Leading on from this as well, conures are also generally much louder than cockatiels. Now don't get me wrong, when chip and fish start screaming, they are loud. But conures generally are much louder. As I said with cockatiels, they kind of sing, especially the males, and they can be more tuneful. Whereas conures are very, very loud and it's generally screaming. Now they can talk a bit scampy, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up. But he's actually saying scampy and pickles in my ear, which is very cute. Um, they know a couple of words, but they're not as great as talking. Kind of, again, depends on the individual and how much you reinforce uh, the talking. But yes, they're really, really loud and you have to be very sensitive when you hear. Uh, after 12 years of working with parrots, I actually have tinnitus because they do ruin your ears. So that's another thing to consider. If you value your hearing, maybe parrots aren't for you anyway. Now, leading on from noise, Conyers is actually really overstimulated by noise. They make a lot of noise themselves, but if you talk really, really loudly, you get really excited, they can go from one to a hundred with overstimulation, and that leads to a lot of bite cases. So quite often when you have conures and you wanna avoid those bites and avoid kind of chaotic situations, you have to talk very softly, sometimes even whisper to them as well and just be really calm and quiet. So if you have a really, really busy, active household, lots going on, lots of noise all the time, maybe conures might not be right for you because they're gonna be in this constant heightened state, which can be really stressful for them. And it can lead to the behavioral problems I mentioned, like screaming and biting, that kind of thing. So it really does depend on your lifestyle and your situation, but we have Notice that especially with our consultations we do with our bird behavior training business best behaved birds so many conures are overstimulated by noise especially our scampi here uh, he once he gets overstimulated his feathers go up he's on patrol he's looking for trouble and we know to try and calm things down because uh, as i said they can be very bitey and very naughty now as i mentioned before conures are very mischievous very active always on the go so while for some people that's going to be really exciting and really fun it does require a lot of supervision it requires a lot of entertainment for them to keep them busy and out of trouble and doing things you want them to do and not misbehaving and you know chewing the walls or getting into mischief so they are a real handful obviously every parrot as we say very often is like having a toddler for a really really long time and it's very hard to keep them entertained sometimes so that's something you've got to consider have you got the time and effort patience finances to keep them entertained occupied lots of different things to do in and out of the cage as well pickles 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 Pickles, 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 pickles. So one of the most obvious um, attributes to conures compared to cockatiels is conures like to nip. Now I'm not saying full on biting is normal, that's definitely not normal and I don't want to normalise that. But with conures they are very kind of exploratory with their beak and they will nip occasionally, they'll nip ears, necks, that kind of thing. It's just part of what they do, it's part of their personality. And for some people who might be more sensitive to pain, that might be really tricky because it's very hard to completely train that out of conures. It's part of their behaviour, part of their makeup and it's what they do. As I said, you don't want full on bleeding bites, that is an indicator of a behavioral issue, but kind of exploratory nips, biting the skin a little bit, pinching as well, is not fun, but it is part of the conure makeup. So if you can't handle kind of being nipped quite often, then conures might not be the right pet for you. Now, one of the really fun um, things about conures compared to cockatiels is they, generally speaking, 
are cuddlers. You might be able to tell my hair and these two together, although we have done a lot of bonding with them. They do, generally speaking, love to cuddle. That could be in your hand, as long as you're not stroking them down their back, because that's going to lead to hormone issues. But you can stroke them on their head and neck, they can lay in your hand, they can cuddle in your hair, they can cuddle each other. And it's really, really cute and it really builds up that affection because most humans will really enjoy that kind of tactile interaction with birds. Um, compared to cockatiels, they do like head scratches, but generally speaking, they won't want to cuddle and snuggle like most conures will but not all conures will, that's another thing to consider. Don't get conure because you want a cuddly bird because every bird is an individual. And like the cockatiels were singing, it's not a reason to get a bird because you want something to cuddle, get a soft toy. Um, but it is a really nice aspect if your bird is interested in that behavior. Last point I wanted to make on conures as pickles or whispers in my ear is generally speaking compared to other birds they are bullies so if you have other birds in your home such as cockatiels or budgies or other birds like that conures are known for bullying other birds they've got a really big beak with a strong bite force compared to their size and they do like to chase other birds stop them getting resources like food and water and toys so if you're looking to add to your flock and you want to have a big cohesive flock together could be tricky integrating conures. It's not impossible, but for us, generally speaking, we try and keep outings separate between the cockatiels and the conures just because they will kind of harass them, they'll chase them around. Um, the conures get quite possessive over different things and you know if the cockatiels want to land somewhere they're going to stop them so just bear that in mind if you want to integrate a conure into your home it may not be possible or it may take a lot of extensive training and work and one-on-one -on -one work with the birds to make sure that can work together because they do like to bully other birds Now we've talked about a lot of the differences between the two species, let's talk about some of the similarities because there are things to consider if you want to get either of those two species. Now the first one is your bird needs to have a fresh diet. You can't give them an all seed diet or an all pelleted diet, they need to have a fresh raw food diet that is balanced with lots of different ingredients. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have my diet guide, I'll leave a card for that now and a link in the description so you can go and check that out and see what you need to be providing for your bird before you bring them home because it's very important to get it right, otherwise it can cause behavioural and health problems if you don't get the diet quite right. Another really important factor in giving your bird the best possible life is to give them 12 hours of uninterrupted sleep every single night. Now that can be really tricky with different setups. If you have a bird in your bedroom or if you have a very busy household, that might not be possible for you. If you like to stay up late, if you like loud music, that kind of thing, that's gonna be really tricky when you are managing having a bird in your home. So just bear that in mind, that might not mean that you have the right kind of setup for a bird. Another important thing to consider is getting any bird into your life is going to be a huge lifestyle change. There are so many different things you have to change in your home to make it safe for your bird. For example, you can't have any kind of non-stick cookware. That includes things like waffle makers, toasties, certain hair dryers if you're using those around your birds often contain things like Teflon. I have two different videos on um, common household dangers for birds. You can go and check those out. You can't use candles, wax melts, um, loads of different things. If you have a self-cleaning function on your oven, you cannot use that at all because that is super dangerous for your birds. There are loads of different aspects of our lives we have to change in order to make sure they are nice and safe. This is generally speaking because birds have a very sensitive respiratory system and uh, lots of different toxic fumes in our homes that we can manage our birds cannot so that is something to consider and also our birds like to get into lots of mischief so we have to be really careful what plants we have in our homes wires everything like that if there's danger they will find it so if you are not willing to make that commitment to completely change your lifestyle way of life that kind of thing then maybe a parrot isn't right for you this also goes with if you want to travel a lot or you're out a lot or you're out late you maybe go to school and you have lots of extracurricular activities after school as well you might not be able to have time for your bird um, so that's just something to bear in mind they do take up a lot of time and um, you need to make sure you have time in your life for them again as with any bird species not just cockatiels and conures they need a very large cage not just one that you can afford you need to be able to give them that space they have lots of things to do in their cage just like they do outside of their cage it should be just as enriching no matter where they are and they need to be able to have space to stretch and stretch their wings as well and explore and be busy because they're very active creatures so you need to make sure you not only have space for a big cage but you also have the finances for them as well 
Now upkeep of any parrot as well is very expensive. Vet visits alone can be really expensive. I know for our vets it costs £70 just to speak to a vet, let alone anything else. Their fresh diet, refreshment of toys, the cage itself, uh, travel cages, perches, play stands. There's so many different expenses for your bird you need to consider. So you need to make sure that you've got the finances for them to take care of them. And they do live a really long time as well. So it's not just one-off costs, it's all the time, always buying things for your birds. Now another point which is slightly controversial, believe it or not, is I believe that regardless of whether you get a cockatiel or a conure, you should be able to house multiples of them. They don't need to be in the same cage, but giving them that species appropriate communication is so important for them. While they can really bond with us, and that's brilliant, and we get so much interaction and love and lots of fun with them, it just doesn't compare to being able to communicate with their own species. So where possible, I would always advise to try and have more than one bird. Even multiple species, they're still able to communicate in a similar language compared to us. You know, we're completely different species. Um, but it's just really important for them to get that kind of communication and interaction. So those are my thoughts on the differences and similarities between cockatiels and conyers. I can't tell you which one to get, but I hope this video has been useful in helping you make a decision whether a parrot is right for you, and maybe which one of these two species might fit your lifestyles best. But remember, every bird is an individual, so as I said, don't get a cockatiel because you want it to sing, don't get a conyer because you want it to cuddle, because your bird might not like that, and then that's why a lot of birds end up in rescues, because people have these wild expectations, you know, watching um, videos online of seeing other birds and expecting their bird to be the same. It's just not like that. You should be getting parrots for very different reasons, which I've spoken about on my channel before. Uh, I'll leave some information down below if you want to know why I think people should make the choices to get parrots or not. Um, but yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other thoughts on the differences or similarities between cockatiels and conyers, leave them down in the comments as I'd love to speak to you. And also, if you have a cockatiel or a conya, let us know down below what you love about your bird, because as I said, they're all individuals and I'd like to know about your birds and what you really enjoy about them, but also maybe what you found really challenging about them because there are so many different challenges when keeping parrots in our lives. So thank you so much for watching, I hope you're having a fantastic week, take care and see you later.